Four-star quarterback, Aaron Nolan, selected the Ohio State Buckeyes. Buckeye fans, you guys can calm down about your quarterback position now in the 2024 class. You've got it locked down. Uh, The four-star kid, number seven-rated quarterback right now on 247 Sports, uh, is coming to to Ohio State. So we're going to do in this uh, video like we always do, is we're going to be breaking down, like, what does he look like? Strengths, weaknesses. If you've never seen this kid play before, if you're just kind of getting involved in the recruiting and you're seeing that, we're going to go through some film. So I have some film breakdown for you guys. And then we're going to go over their outlook and look at the 2024 class and what Ohio State's been able to do in that program. Ryan Day has done a phenomenal job this offseason, kind of shoring that up um, after a couple difficult seasons. Uh, whether or not you think difficult is you know losing to Michigan, which I know Ohio State fans do. So we're gonna be looking at that and just going over their outlook and what they look like. So you know what to do. Hit that like button while the intro is going and let us know which you know, let us know how we're doing in the comments. All right, like I said, Aaron Nolan, we're going to get into him, what he looks like, a kid out of Georgia, Langston Hughes High School, um, and, and what were you, what you can expect moving forward. So let's dive into who he is. So let's look at kind of the numbers from high school. Uh, you know, 6'3", 195, so big kid, southpaw, we have that. Uh, and you see his numbers got better each season. So 2020, 2021, 2022 is really his breakout year. So last year he threw for 55 touchdowns, only four interceptions, looked phenomenal as a junior. That's really what, you know, kind of – kind of took him to that next level right 15 and 0 record he won a state title uh he hit he had in his junior year as you see that he led him to the state finals uh for the first time ever as a full-time starter so when you're looking at him he's been definitely flying up the boards and this is one of those reasons why you know he he's right there in terms of recruiting a lot of people have gone on after him um in, in terms of like where he's at and as a recruit and as a player i know clemson was on him pretty early but now all the big guns are coming out right so we're looking at miami uh, Ohio State, Arkansas, Alabama, all these guys jumped on Nolan and then Ohio State just offered him recently and then they grabbed him. So you're seeing here a very fast riser, kind of similar to if you knew anything about kind of CJ Stroud's kind of rise and like how he kind of went into Ohio State, had that junior breakout year. Nolan kind of fits a lot of those categories um, with that rise as well. Now, as a passer, so let's talk about what we can expect from him, what it looks for. So one thing is athleticism. You know, I I think he does have that athleticism, even being at the size that he is, right? Uh, He does have plenty of experience running RPOs. So you see that pretty well out there. And he can kind of move. He's functional athletic with his legs. He's creative too. I like when you watch him play, he gets outside the pocket really well. Uh, and he can make plays happen. So you like that about him. Progressions too. I think he works very well through every level of the field. So like he knows where he's going and, and you watch him the tape and you kind of dive into it. And, and I'm a sicko. So I've been watching these guys' tape and then for a while. Uh, y- you'll see him do very well looking guys off. He knows second, third, fourth reads. It's not just one, one guy, hey, I'm going to go here. I think in the RPO, he makes really good decisions too. So you'll see that he has lightning fast release. Like his release is probably the, quickest of everybody in this class uh, but he gets out quick we're going to see that on the tape as well but he does that really well through his progressions and his accuracy man his ability to layer at every part of the field it gets it where it needs to go like you, when he when it releases his hand you know it's going to go there like when it releases it's going there it's going to be quick we know it's going to get there on time like those are the good things like these are the things that really really stand out about his tape that should excite Ohio State fans for what, what's coming, right? Um, and then when we're talking about this, now I always do this. And again, I got some hate from some parents about prospects. I'm not talking about weaknesses. I'm just saying these are things that he needs to work on moving forward. And remember, he's got a whole year plus he's going to develop. So like these are just things that kind of stand out to me based on scouts, tape, and little things like that. Deep ball accuracy, I think, is something he has a deep ball. I think he has adequate arm strength. I wouldn't say the lead arm strength, but he has enough to get there. Like 247 sports comps to the Michael Penix Jr. That's not a bad comp. I get the comp. Um, and you could see that with the deep ball issues. I think he can get it to guys. I just don't know if he's got that, hey, 60 yard rope type of guy. Like, and I don't know if he needs that, but that's just one of the things that stood out. Adjustment to Division One, and all that means 
is that there are some why he does do processing really well i do think that like he can kind of throw his guys open at times but other times you know he, there's a lot of open receivers just going to catch the ball he's gonna have to throw he's gonna have to throw the ball open to a lot of these guys something that you saw cj do very well at right so we're gonna compare these ohio state quarterbacks you saw cj get better each year and this last year i thought it was best ability to kind of know where the guy's gonna be able to throw his guys open see it before it actually happens that's something that no one's gonna have to definitely you know improve on which all these quarterbacks are gonna do and in mechanics under pressure when you're watching a lot of his tape there's no pressure i think that sometimes when he does get into trouble is when he does have a little bit of pressure and i think his mechanics can kind of get i don't want to say wonky that's a bad term but just kind of he, he rushes them so he can rush his throws he doesn't have a ton of interceptions but i do think that a product of that is like hey been able to keep upright gets the ball quick rpos those type of things i think same thing with stroud that we saw like under pressure he's gonna have to develop that mechanics under it get it out quicker um know where his his you know progression is gonna be a little bit faster all under pressure i think he does a great job then he's not under pressure but i do think that pressure area is where you're looking at could be an issue now when i watch him on tape though really like where he can do it right here see nice and see deep ball is fine the good layer right there again that's about his range when you're talking about like hey as his deep ball arm strength he can get better remember he's younger uh, but those are the other things that stand out again he's not afraid to take risk here you'll see it here this is just a high school throw it up ball i'm gonna score a touchdown like that's 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 there and we see these on guys these guys tape all the time um again kind of steps up knows where he's going to go with it and again good ball wide open receiver right so that's one of those things that we see a lot of guys just running open and he's able to get it to him which that's what you want from a quarterback uh but at the next level that's something that he's going to have to throw into i love his accuracy here though right so like there's little layers of these tapes where we're watching him and you watch him go through that you're like damn he's got that like he has that it factor in terms of getting the ball on his guys these guys know where it's coming to and vice versa you'll see it here able to kind of get it. And again, this is where that Michael Penix junior comp comes into play. Like that, that really reminded me of him. Like, and that's a hell of a comp. I don't necessarily agree at all the comps I see on different websites, but that is a good comp for him. Able to get it to the, you know, get it to the boundary, get it to the sideline, get it to this guy, um, goes through it. Well, has good enough accuracy and zip. I think he has good velocity in the red zone. You'll see it here. Look at this RPO decision gets about quick. You're going to see that highlight a ton. I see it all the time on social media. But that's what he does do well. Like, hey, he sees that RPO, knows where the decision's going, has a quick release to get it out as quick as he can. Again, able to make guys miss. You saw right there. That's the functional athleticism that excites you. Like, not a burner, but a guy that can make plays, right? That's kind of what you're looking at with him. Again, kind of the RPO system, dime in between three defenders. Like, those are the accuracy and those are the things that you have to know that Ohio State, Ryan Day loves from his quarterback. He saw it and he's like, hey, we got to get this kid here, uh, over here to kind of set a, settle down that quarterback room with, with, with how it's looking. Again, you'll see it here. This is that athleticism you like, kind of makes plays with his legs. And, and similar to, we know that Ohio State quarterbacks, especially Day, doesn't necessarily want his quarterback to make plays with his legs, but at least this kid can, right? And you're, and you're thinking about it from even maybe if you play college fantasy, fantasy aspect of it as well. Um, gets it out, a little bit of playmaking. I like this little, you know, old school, you know, or I guess new school. We could say Patrick Mahomes. Uh, kind of area just flips it out, get it out quick, reads it really well, knows where his RPO is going. And that's really where it's at. Like his ability to release it, get it out quick to his guys. Like that's the thing that Nolan does pretty well. You have to like that. And I ended it on this one, just accuracy to the sideline. And when you're thinking about the receivers that are going to be there, man, you have to absolutely love like where he went in a situation. So when we're looking at it, here's the 2024 outlook of right now, the commits that are on that roster. So Jeremiah Smith, wide receiver, number one wide receiver in the class, going to Ohio State. Mylon Graham, number five wide receiver of the class, going to Ohio State. James Peoples, running back. When you're looking at him, number five running back in the country, going to Ohio State. And I thought they did an excellent job. This is really where they're rebuilding their line. And I think that Ryan Day did a great job in terms of like what he was trying to do with this class. Like he's got weapons on the outside. He's got one of the best running backs in the country. And then just look at what they did on that offensive line. Devontae Armstrong, 6'5", 288, big kid interior line. Deontay Armstrong, 6'6", 280, offensive tackle. Absolute loads, right? Ian Moore, interior offensive line, 6'5", 295. Mark Knive, 6'5", 315, three-star kid. But again, you're looking at size, pedigree. If Ohio State's recruiting you, there's a reason. Uh, they did also add Garrett Stover, and you see it rolling. That's a loaded class, right? So when we're thinking of what they are, they're going to lose Marvin Harrison, Probably a Mecca Buka, maybe Julian Fleming, right? But hey, they brought in Brandon Ennis. They brought in Carnell Tate, who's having a hell of a spring. Jaden Ballard is still there. I don't know what these other freshmen are going to do out there. Caleb Brown, those other areas. But they really rebuilt that 
that offensive line here with this class. You're going to get absolute studs there. Then they will, you know, tie in air rolling with this, be that kid, that four-star quarterback coming in there with the weapons on the outside. They're absolutely retooling. And you have to be so excited as an Ohio State fan with what they're able to do there. So have to love this recruiting. You know, they're the number, I think it's number four recruit right now. I, there'll be a top five in terms of team recruiting. Uh, that You know, with Nolan there, probably top three. And they're absolutely killing it, and and they and they have to. I know Michigan's doing really well in that in that division too. And and whether you like Michigan or Ohio State, you have to love that both these teams are recruiting at high levels. The rivalry is at its best, and the conference, the Big Ten conference, is at its best when these two teams are competing like this. And it, it, it elevates everybody, it lifts everybody up. Competition is important, uh, and you're looking at just like the Big Ten overall with USC and UCLA coming, and, and that new look. Aaron is going to step right in that. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I. I Congratulations to Ohio State fans. You guys got a good one here. Uh, hit that like. Hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you like college football, you like this kind of area, uh, we give these guys you know content every day pretty much for it feels like on this channel. Uh, but we appreciate you guys, and we will check you guys next time.